Hey guys, Jim here. I wanted to share with you another new acquisition, something that just arrived to me today. Something that, uh, a brand that I've been curious about for a while and just have never been able to get my hands on one because the only U.S.-based distributorship that they have is True North Knives and Neil is always, always, always sold out of these things. So I've just never had a chance to fondle one, touch one, see one, scratch and sniff one, anything. And that is, of course, Shirogorov. Uh, it's a Russian brand. Uh, designer is Igor Shirogorov, and him and his brother are the ones that do all of the production. And I keep, you know, hearing little bits here and there in, you know, on forums and people making videos saying just how perfect they are, how great they are, and how they kind of refer to this as the Sabenza of flippers. I mean, that's mighty high praise. When you hear something like that, you're like, mm, well, I got to check me out one of those. Unfortunately, the few people that flip them tend to flip them for a fair amount of profit. And, you know, that's to be expected on something that's relatively difficult to get. You know, it's not that these are impossible to get. It's just that there's not a big distributorship for them. And, you know, again, like when Neil gets them, they're sold out immediately. You can order directly from Russia, from Shirogorov. And, you know, order it that way. I don't know what the wait times are. I'm sure they're fairly excessive. Otherwise, everybody would have one. So we'll start first off with the packaging. Uh, nice looking packaging with the Shirogorov logo uh, kind of pressed or, excuse me, embossed uh, out of the cardboard. It's just a simple cardboard box. You know, we were talking about packaging in one of my rant videos. And I can tell you right now, um, this probably costs less than your standard white cardboard box a la Hinderer and it looks a little bit nicer. I don't know, it's not just a plain white box with a sticker stuck to it. You know, it's like they, they did something purposeful here. It comes like a little piece of accordion cardboard inside to take up the extra room where the knife doesn't get too jostled around. You know, it's not the most careful way to package a knife, but it's acceptable. It's nice. Inside of that will come your little birth certificate with the with their stamp here their little crest and everything you could ever want to know about this knife in Russian which pretty much does me no good I, I can damn well barely uh, read and spell and speak English I'm certainly not going to try and tackle Russian but everything that you need I suppose is right there so we'll get all that mess out of the way and we'll bring this into focus now, the model I've got here is based off the Model 95. It's a Model 95 Hati. Now, when you get into a regular Model 95, it's going to be titanium on both sides. This one is going to be titanium on one side, on your lock side. And while this may look like sculpted G10, it's actually not. This is actually going to be genuine carbon fiber. It's very difficult to pick that up, but when you go out in the light, it has that wonderful shimmering effect that really only carbon fiber gives off. And when you get inside of the scale is where you'll see that yes, it is in fact uh, excuse me, carbon fiber. So nicely done. It's an interesting way of doing things. And they've actually done a couple things on this knife that were a little bit less than traditional. First thing before I get into all that and the specs and everything, I just got to say, wow on the flipping action. Now I see what guys are talking about. This thing is, look how smooth that was. Wonderfully smooth, lightning fast. And this is not one of the newer models that has the bearing pivot system. This is simply done on bushings, just like if you were to pick up a hinderer or pick up a, uh, a Sabenza. I mean, this is just done on simple bushings. And yes, by the way, I've already nicked myself a couple of times from how quick that blade drops down and not getting my finger out of the way. I actually took a little piece of skin off earlier as well. So let's talk about some of the wonderful aspects of this. First off, it's a bigger knife than you think it is. And even in the hand, it feels smaller than it really is. Uh, that is a four and one eighth inch long blade. And it, it just doesn't look like it because of that very long and thin blade profile. To give you some size comparisons here, Put it next to a Tim Britton Tango. And there you go. See, you're starting to see just how big that is. 
put it next to a Spyderco Manix 2. Once again, you start to get a feel now for how large it's actually a big knife. But I don't care how many times you tell yourself it's a big knife, it just doesn't feel like a big knife. And then, of course, the standard by which I generally measure most knives. There it is against a large Sebenza. So it's got considerable size to it, but it weighs next to nothing. It feels lightweight, yet really balanced in the hand. It's kind of a, a magical knife when, when you think about how large it is to how slim the profile is to how, it, how small it feels in the hand, and how no matter how you look at it, the blade just doesn't look very big. Uh, we'll get up close here. This is S30V. They do a number of different steels for their knives, and I don't know if there's a rhyme or reason for it. You'll see S35VN, S90. I mean, there's just all kinds of different steels that they've been using. Uh, this is a full flat grind, and it's been done beautifully. I'm not usually a flat grind kind of person and I've, I've come to appreciate the at least the look of them a lot more recently. Now I can tell you right now if I had seen this knife a year ago I wouldn't have even turned my head to look at it. It's got a very basic and very plain look to it and that's just simply not what I was collecting at the time and I'm still collecting more wild stuff. You know it, it's things like you know the Yuna or uh, my light foot, more, you know, exotic looking, crazy blade profiles, fancy swedges, things like that that have really attracted me into so many different knives that I may have just simply overlooked something like this. And it was only when I started getting into recognizing what I had in my collection, the holes that still needed to be filled and not continuing to buy repetitious things that I started looking elsewhere. And I started looking at the Shirogorovs and listening to all the glowing reviews that people had about them. And that's what got me interested. There is a beauty to its simplicity. I love this pattern that's been carved out of the carbon fiber. Now realize how hard it is to get a pattern to come out this clean and this nice in carbon fiber. You see it a lot in G10, but it's really hard sometimes with the weave pattern in carbon fiber to get such a clean and consistent look where it doesn't look, where it doesn't create the optical illusion where it looks choppy or the lines look uneven. They did a beautiful machine job on this. The backspacer on here another thing of beauty. I'm not really a backspacer person. You guys know I like uh, an open design with standoffs, but I really love how that's been done and how they've incorporated the area to hold the lanyard through the back. Uh, it only has two points of connection, one at your pivot and one back here going through the backspacer. All custom hardware, but it's not customized to agree where you can, to a degree where you can't do your own maintenance and take the knife apart. Not that I would recommend you would take something like this apart, but I mean it's it's a fairly basic, straightforward knife. I don't see why you couldn't. Uh, but just a regular standard flathead screwdriver is going to fit in there. But it gives it kind of a a cool, almost spaceshipy kind of look. Another thing that I appreciate is the lock bar notch is on the inside, not on the outside of the frame, where it takes away from the flow of the design. Uh, your lock bar has the over travel built in. Let me see if I can get it to focus in there. You might be able to see it. Yes, there is your over travel, so you can't overextend the titanium lock bar. And part of that piece, and that's what's screwed in here, uh, is going to be your steel lock face. So you have steel on steel contact. I wouldn't expect this to wear much at all and start walking over. It's got a fairly early lock up to my eyes. Let's see. Oh yeah, that is actually pretty early lockup. It is glass smooth. I mean, you, ooh, yeah, that was kind of scary there. Glad this blade doesn't weigh much more. It has such a wonderfully smooth operation. You would swear. I mean, you would swear that this thing is on bearings, but it's not. That's what's so crazy about this and what is so, I don't know, orgasmic about this knife. Everything is just smooth. The tactility, when you touch it, it's smooth. When you 
operate it. It's smooth. Now it has a very, very heavy detent and that's what aids it in really popping out there like that because again, it's not a heavy blade. It may be thick blade stock, but it tapers down to almost a needle-like point. This is certainly not going to be something you're going to use to pry things, but this is going to be a great uh, piercer. It's going to be a great cutter. This, in my opinion, is a really nicely rounded EDC knife. It's going to be a very slim profile in the pocket, both this way and this way. And look at this custom titanium pocket clip. This is the kind of stuff that you expect to see when you pick up expensive custom knives. And there are just so many knives out there that cost a lot more than this one that give you a, just a, a very generic titanium spring clip. Something that may have just come out of a parts bin or they could have ordered from, you know, a, a knife, knife making supplier website or something. This is all completely custom built. Centering is beautiful. I love the stone wash. I, I almost want to call this a gentle stone wash. It's not a very aggressive stone wash finish. It's going to help to mask some of the daily carry marks that this is surely going to be getting uh, because I kind of looked at getting one of these as maybe an investment piece, you know, kind of like buying a hinderer or something like that, where you go, it'll be nice to have it in my collection. And then when I'm uh, primed and ready to buy something fairly expensive, I can flip it, you know, make 50, 100, 150 bucks on it and help fund that new purchase. And I got to tell you, not only is this going to be a keeper in my collection, but I'm going to start searching out uh, other variations, some of the more high end customs. I saw uh, when Tough Thumbs shot his video from the Blade Show, he went to Shiro Goro's table and, and you got to see a few of them in that video and a lot of them were done with these beautiful mirror polish blades, just real beautiful works of art. So I'm certainly going to be adding more to my collection. I will be probably selling one or two of my knives to make room. I'm just astounded at the simplicity and Again, Sabenza-like perfection in the way this has been manufactured. I also love the fact they didn't have to put some kind of big, giant, ridiculous flipper on here. It's very small, very, it's just non-obtrusive. I mean, even if it were a tip-down carry, which I wouldn't have bought if it was a tip-down carry, but even so, it's such a small, unobtrusive flipper that drawing it out of the pocket it would be less likely to snag on the backside seam of your pocket or the corner of the lip of your pocket. There's just something, and again, it's, it's, it's hard to put it into words. It's not tangible. It's, there's something about this that it has, it has a unique soul. I guess I can put it like that. And it's not often I'm immediately enamored with a knife. And I could tell you right now from the get-go, from the first time I opened this box to fondling it right now, I almost don't want to keep talking. I want to keep, just sit here and stroke it. The, the knife, guys. Come on. And I just want to look at it and I want to, I don't know. I want to carry it. I, want to, I actually want to have to go out somewhere right now so that I could put this knife in my pocket and go out with it. Great feel. Both forward and reverse grip. It's got just enough grip to this texture to where you feel like you have a solid purchase on it, but there's nothing, it's not uncomfortable in any way. It's just, again, it's near perfect. Now, I did buy this from an individual. I was not able to score this brand new from, from a dealer or directly from them. So it's got a couple of scuff marks, unfortunately, on the blade, and that will irk the living hell out of me. So I'm probably gonna send this out fairly soon to one of my knife maker friends and have them just kind of refinish the blade, make it where it looks like new again, so I can put my own scars on it. I, I prefer, if I'm gonna have an EDC, especially one that's fairly expensive like this, I wanna put my own marks on it. It's just kind of kind of how I am. But this will most certainly be seeing plenty of heavy use. And for those that don't watch all of my videos or you're new to watching my videos and you're you know, kind of just nodding your head going, yeah, everybody says they use their knives on their expensive knives. Yeah, I mean, even look at my beautiful, wondrous direware. As expensive as these things are, I don't give a shit. 
I've been using the hell out of this thing. I've been, that's just, that's just how I am. I'm going to use my stuff. I got crazy. I got a crazy set of wear marks somewhere on here. I kind of forgot where they were from when I had the skull on this lanyard. I got marks on my blade on my Rockstead. I don't care, man. These things are meant to be used. They're meant to have fun with it. Damn it, I'm going to do that. So, beginning tomorrow, this is going to be in the pocket. Going to be enjoying the living shit out of this. So, I will say this. If you were like me and you were on the fence about this knife, because you'd really only ever seen pictures here and there, maybe a video here and there, and you really weren't sure because you'd look at the pictures and go, you know, it looks like a nice knife, but it doesn't look particularly outstanding or special. And without holding it in my hand, I just don't know if I want to invest that much money into one sight unseen. I'm going to tell you this right now. Buy one. If you have an appreciation for very, very fine fit and finish, a, an overall nice a knife design that has a clean and subtle appearance, and is built to be as smooth as glass. You want to get your hands on this. I mean, look at look at how much artistic work was done just in the cutout for the lock bar. Then this extra design that they've etched into it here. And then obviously the contours and the machine that's been done to the pocket clip. You see that attention to detail. You see the custom screws. And you realize that there really is something wonderfully special about this seemingly oversimplified knife design. So that's pretty much my take on it, my initial impressions. Uh, as I'm beginning to do more often now, in a couple of months you'll see me do a long-term review and see if I still feel the same about this in three or four months as I do tonight, as I hold it in my hands and ogle it. Uh, during its first uh, few hours in my household. And I have a funny feeling I'm going to feel just the same about it. If you guys have a sure go of and you have a story that you'd like to share, please put it down in the comments below. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please put them down there, and I will do my best to get back to you. Thanks, guys.